One issue that we need to deal with is that at this point, we only know about the existence of two real numbers, the numbers 0 and the number 1. This is because these are the only real numbers that are explicitly defined in the definition. And so we need to ask ourselves, is it possible that the real numbers consist only of 0 and 1? It's interesting to note that you can have a number system consisting of only 0 and 1, if the addition and multiplication tables look like this. Here you'll notice that anything plus 0 is itself, and anything multiplied by 1 is itself. Also, every number has a negative. The negative of 0 is 0, and the negative of 1 is 1, because in this case, 1 plus 1 is equal to 0. Both addition and multiplication in this number system are also commutative and associative. And further, multiplication does distribute over addition in this number system. This means that the first nine axioms of the real numbers, the field axioms, are all satisfied by this number system. And yet this number system consists of only the numbers 0 and 1. The question is, how do we know that the real numbers are not this number system? In order to prove that there are more than just two real numbers, what we're going to do is show that the number 1 plus 1 is a new real number, meaning it's not 0 and it's not 1. And we're going to do this in two propositions. At first, we're going to prove that 1 plus 1 is not 1. This is fairly easy to do. And second, we're going to prove that 1 plus 1 is not 0. This one is a little bit more difficult because, as we've seen, it is very possible to have a number system satisfying all of the field axioms in which 1 plus 1 is equal to 0. And so to prove that 1 plus 1 is not equal to 0 for the real number system, we're going to have to look beyond the field axioms and include some of the order axioms in our proof. <laughs> To begin, let's show that 1 plus 1 is not equal to 1. We're going to do this using a proof by contradiction, which means we begin with an assumption that 1 plus 1 is equal to 1. Remember that in a proof by contradiction, you always begin with an assumption that your proposition is false. At this point, we have to look for a contradiction to this assumption. One easy way to do this is that we can simply subtract 1 from both sides. If on both sides of the equation we add negative 1, then regroup using associativity, we get on the left-hand side 1 plus 0, and on the right-hand side 0. This gives us the equation 1 is equal to 0. And yet, from the definition of the real numbers, we are told that 0 and 1 are not equal to one another. We now have a contradiction that says 1 is equal to 0 and 1 is not equal to 0. And this completes the proof. Next, let's turn our attention to the more difficult proposition, which is proving that 1 plus 1 is not equal to 0. Again, we're going to do this using a proof by contradiction, which means we have to assume that our proposition is false. In other words, we're going to assume that 1 plus 1 is equal to 0. Let's get out some scrap paper. We already know that there is no contradiction between the statement 1 plus 1 equals 0 and any of the field axioms, because there is a number system in which 1 plus 1 equals 0 and all of the field axioms are true. And so we know going into this that we're going to need to appeal to the order axioms. Since the subject of our proof is just the numbers 0 and 1, a good place to start might be with proposition 4 that says 0 is less than 1. If we start with the inequality 0 is less than 1, Remember that the statement we're trying to prove involves the expression 1 plus 1, and so we would like to introduce the expression 1 plus 1 somewhere into our inequality. We can do this by adding 1 to both sides. This gives us 0 plus 1 is less than 1 plus 1. Now, of course, we know that 0 plus 1 is 1. This is because of axiom A3. And under our assumption that we've made, we also know that 1 plus 1 is equal to 0. This gives us 1 is less than 0. We now have two inequalities. One says 0 is less than 1, which we proved in Proposition 4, and the other one says 1 is less than 0, which we've proven based on our assumption that 1 plus 1 is equal to 0. The fact that these two inequalities contradict one another comes from the trichotomy axiom, because the trichotomy axiom says you can only have one relation between any two real numbers, and so this gives us our contradiction. Let's return to our proof. 
Here we start with the inequality 0 is less than 1 from proposition 4. We can add 1 to both sides. On the left hand side we know that 0 plus 1 is 1 by axiom A3. On the right hand side we know that 1 plus 1 is 0 because of our assumption and this gives us the inequality 1 is less than 0. We now have the two inequalities 0 is less than 1 and 1 is less than 0 which is a contradiction to the trichotomy axiom and this completes the proof. With these two propositions, what we've shown is that in the list of real numbers, we have the number 0, the number 1, and now we have this number 1 plus 1, which is not 0 and not 1. This means we have a new number, and of course we denote this number by 2. As soon as we have this number 2, we also have the existence of negative 2 being the additive inverse of 2, as well as 1 half being the multiplicative inverse of 2. And using this reasoning, we can fill in the rest of at least the rational numbers by proving, for example, that 2 plus 1 is greater than 2, and so it has to also be a real number. And that real number will have a negative as well as a multiplicative inverse. And it's with reasoning like this that we can prove the existence of many, many real numbers. However, this reasoning doesn't prove the existence of all of the real numbers that we know about. This is because the system of rational numbers satisfies all of the field axioms as well as the four order axioms. And so using only those axioms, we can only prove the existence of rational numbers. To prove that irrational numbers such as the square root of 2 or pi are also real numbers, we will need to use the completeness axiom, which is the only axiom that is true in the real numbers but not true in the rational numbers. We'll get to this in later videos.